there's no doubt that work sharing does require a fair amount of planning and management. What it does mean, however, is the ability of multiple users working in effectively the same file. The file I've provided for this exercise is not a work sharing enabled file, and that's going to be the whole purpose of this and coming exercises. What I will be getting you to do, however, is to save the file in its present state to a folder on your computer. Saving it again so you can see the process by which backup files are created. Enabling work sharing, creating a central file, and then creating a local file. All the terms will be explained along the way. I suggest you practice this several times before working on a live project. And when you do get to work on a live project, make sure that your co-workers also have the same level of understanding, or better, of work sharing as you do. From your chapter 19 folder, open up chapter 19, work sharing start. At this point, it doesn't matter what view we're looking at, but what I'll get you to do now is to go to the application button and click on save as project. I'm now going to save this project into one of my working directories. Click on save. Although we've been through this process before, it's worth reinforcing the point. Here on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that I've saved my file. Now, if I click on save, you'll see that when I've saved the file, we now have a backup file that has the same name with 0001 at the end. If I press save again, we get 0002, and so on. This keeps happening until I reach the limit for backup files. This file has been set to have three backups, so I'll never have more than three of the backup RVT files. So let's see what happens when I enable work sharing. From the Collaborate toolbar, click on Work Sets. Here we get the message, you are about to enable work sharing. Note, sharing a project requires careful planning and management. Click OK to enable work sharing or cancel to return your project without enable work sharing. Move levels and grids to work set, shared levels and grids, and move the remaining elements to work set, work set one. So once I click OK here, Revit will go through the process of redefining the Revit database. This can take a few minutes, depending on the size of the project, its complexity, and the number of elements in it. Once the process is completed, you'll get this work set dialog box come up. For the time being, we'll click on OK here, because what I want to do now is save the file. I'm not going to save it directly over the top of the one we started with, but once it is saved, you'll notice this Save button will disappear, and this Synchronize and Modify Settings button will become active. From the Application button, click on Save As, Save As Project, and I'm going to call this file Chapter 19, Work Sharing, and let's append Central to the end of the file. What's probably worth pointing out here is the Options button. If I click on Options, you'll see that the work sharing file has 20 backups by default, but that shouldn't be a problem, and you'll see why shortly. I'm going to click on OK, and click on Save. You'll now see that we have the Chapter 19 Work Sharing Central file, and also a Chapter 19 Work Sharing Central Backup folder. This backup folder contains the backups which are completely inaccessible, unlike the backups from a standalone file. Additionally, back in the file, you can now see the Save button has changed. With only one button to save like this, we know that we're working in the central file. Now that we've done the Save As, the next thing to do is click on Relinquish All Mine. What I'm doing here is relinquishing ownership of the objects in the file before I create what is called a local file. I'll click on Synchronize, click on OK, and close the file. 
before I go anywhere near creating a local file, I just want to run through some of the settings that we need to put in place before using your local files. Click on the application button and click on options. At this point, I have a username, and by default, this is defined as the user login. I'll also want to look at the file locations. Here you can see there's a default path for user files. I'm going to change this and call this local Revit files, a folder I've already created on my C drive. So with that set, I can now click on open and browse for the central file that I created earlier. There's my chapter 19 work sharing central file. And as I highlight it, Notice that we have a check adjacent to create new local. What happens here is that when I click on open, Revit will take a copy of the chapter 19 work sharing central file, place it into my local Revit folder and append my username to it. So let's see that in action. Click on open and there's the file that's been copied. This is without doubt the safest way of creating local files. And you'll now see up on the quick access toolbar, I have the ability to save the local file and to synchronize with the central file. Notice the arrow adjacent to the synchronize. Here I can define whether I only want to synchronize or synchronize and modify the settings. In this dialog box, we can also verify the location of the central file. Choose whether we want to save the local file additionally and make a comment on the file, my first save, and click on OK. Let's take a look at another couple of ways that we can create our local files. I'll start by closing my local file. From Windows Explorer, I'll select my central file, copy it, and paste it to my local directory. If I now go and open this file, and I'll browse to my local Revit folders. There's the file I've just copied. Notice how the Create New Local box is totally greyed out. I'll click on Open anyway. We now have a Revit warning message. It says this central model has been moved or copied from this location to my local Revit files location. If you want this file to remain a central model, resave the file as a central model. It gives you instructions on how to make it a central model. But the last sentence is the most important. It says here, if you do not save the file as a central model, it becomes a local user copy belonging to user Simon W. Well, that's what I want. So I'll click close and Revit will continue to open the file. Unless I had actually renamed this file during the copy and paste process, I'm now not sure whether I've got the central file open or not, or am I? Up on the quick access toolbar, I've got the two buttons for save to my local and save to central, where we can once again verify the location of the central model. For local files, however, it is a recognized best practice to have something like a username appended to the end of the file. Let's close the file again and explore the last way of creating a local file. From the startup screen, click on Open. Browse to your project folder. Select the central file and uncheck Create New Local. Click on Open and immediately click on the application button, Save As, and then Project. Browse to your local Revit folder and give the file an appropriate name. So I'll now close this file, I'll synchronize with central. And before we end this particular video, I can almost hear people saying, well, I can see my chapter 19 work sharing central in Windows Explorer. Why go through all the hassle of clicking on open and browsing to the file? Why not just browse to the file in my Windows Explorer and click on it and open it from here? Well, you could do, but, and here's the big one. If you use this workflow, 
and you're working on a large model that takes a few minutes to open, there's a possibility that you're going to go away and make a cup of coffee or tea and then come back and start work. In the meantime, you've forgotten to come up here and click on Save As. So you'll come back to your workstation, start working, and completely forget that you've done the Save As. Meanwhile, several other people are also working on the file. If you've been working away for half an hour, and so have they, and they've been synchronizing with Central, and all of a sudden you click on this button, the Synchronize and Modify Settings, there's every chance that you're going to overwrite their work. So whatever your work processes have been in the past, with using Windows Explorer to open files, it's highly recommended that you don't use it when working with Revit MEP. So we've taken a look at creating a central file, saving it, creating our local files. But what happens tomorrow? Tomorrow morning when you come to work, are you going to open that local file again? Or are you going to do something different? There are some good reasons for not opening your local file when you come in tomorrow morning. The majority of these are related to what other people are doing and saving and synchronizing back to the central file. These could be people who are working really late, or you could be outsourcing, using Revit Server, and having a company on the other side of the world working on the files overnight. What this means is your local file becomes out of date with the central file. Most of the time this doesn't make any difference, as you'll be synchronizing regularly with the central file. But there are chances that your local file can become so far out of date with the central file that it can't synchronize the changes. And at this point you have to create a new local file. So good working practice is to create a new local file every morning. Let's see what happens when we do that. From your startup screen, click on Open. Browse to your project folder to find your work sharing central. Now before I do this, I'm just going to go up a level, find my project folder and drag it into the looking list. Now with one click, I can come to this folder every morning to find the central file. Here we can see I've got the central file selected and that we're going to create a new local. Exactly the same process that we were doing in an earlier video. So let's click on open and Revit gives us a notification. It says it cannot create a local file. You are trying to create a new local file, but a file with this name already exists. What do you want to do? Do I want to overwrite the existing file or append a timestamp to the existing file? Let's try this second option and see what happens in my local folder. I'm still working in the file Chapter 19 Work Sharing Central Simon W. But yesterday's file has been renamed with a date stamp. Depending on your setup, you may wish to keep several of these files as backups or use the overwrite option. This largely depends on directions from your Drawing Office Manager. This exercise does require a central file and several users to interact with and it's going to be impossible for me to supply you with a file. The only thing I can do is show you this process in action. I've been given the task of modifying parts of the HVAC layout. So I zoom into the area where I want to work and select one of the ducts. If I try and move it, I'll get a message and this error message cannot be ignored. It says that I cannot edit the element until Alice resaves the element to central and relinquishes it and I reload to latest. So what do I want to do here? I want to place a request with Alice. I get a further message saying that I've placed an editing request and it's been placed to the user Alice. I can continue working instead of waiting a response. So I can continue working by clicking on close and press cancel. In the meantime, a dialog box will pop up on Alice's computer saying that I've asked for control of these elements. I have to wait for her to grant my request and I get a message saying 
that Alice has granted my request, and I now have been granted permission to edit the elements, which have now been highlighted on the screen. So I should now be able to select them, click on Move, and move the duct. In the meantime, a colleague, Bob, is working on level two, and he wants to make some changes to the ductwork as well. Only he seems to be working in the same riser location. He places a request with myself, and I get an editing request from Bob. We get a note here saying that synchronization is required to grant the request. I can click on show, and it tells me there are no open views that show the highlighted elements. Searching through the closed views to find a good view could take a long time. Do I want to continue? Well, I'll say yes. We found the duct that Bob wants to change, but I cannot grant permission. What I have to do is synchronize with Central, and I'm going to relinquish control of borrowed elements. Before I do that, however, let's just check on the status of the work sets. Here we can see that Alice is an owner of the mechanical work set, Bob is a borrower of electrical, and I'm a borrower of mechanical. Let's do that synchronized with central. Make sure that I'm relinquishing control of the borrowed elements and click on OK. Bob will now receive the message saying that his request has been granted. He is now the owner of the element, but he must also synchronize with central as his file is out of date. Apart from the workset dialog box, which shows you who the owners and borrowers are in your project file, there's another way to see who has ownership of objects or what workset objects are placed on. For each view, you are able to see work sharing display. So let's look at checkout status. The elements highlighted are checked out. Let's look at owners. We have a similar view, but how do we know who those owners are? Let's look at the settings. Here you can see we have user A, Alice, Bob, and Simon W. We can also see the individual work sets. This may be more help to us if we were to look at a 3D view and turn the work sharing display settings on. Here we can see the different work sets. And here we can see the owners. And if we hover over an element, we can see who it was created by, its current owner, and who last updated it in the central file, as well as any editing requests. The important thing about work set ownership and borrowing is that when you do synchronize with central for the end of your session, you relinquish control of all the elements you either own or have borrowed. Now that I've relinquished control of those elements, you can see they have no overriding color. If I go back to the work set dialog box, you'll see that I'm now no longer an owner or a borrower. This workflow is extremely important when you're using work sharing. There will become a time in the life of your Revit project where you have to issue it, that is the model, to one of your collaborative partners. If you're using the work sharing process to manage the file between multiple users, then there is a specific process for creating a new file by detaching it from the central file. Let's take a look at that process and see what happens along the way. From your startup screen, click on Open. Browse to your Chapter 19 folder and select the file. Chapter 19 Multi Users. Only this time, do not click on Open straight away. What we want to do is detach this from Central File. And to do that, we've got a special button in this dialog box. Now, watch what happens when I click on Detach from Central. The Create New Local button becomes unchecked. The file that we're creating here will be effectively a brand new file. Remember when you look up at the top of the screen, you have a file name. When this file is opened, 
using the Detach from Central option, there will be no file name up at the top of your screen. So let's click on Open. Revit now gives us a message. It says that we're going to detach model from central and that detaching this model will create an independent model. You will be unable to synchronize your changes with the original central model. What do you want to do? So what you can do here is detach and preserve the work sets and we can later save the detached model as a new central model or detach and discard work sets. So this discards the original workset information, including workset visibility. You can later create new worksets or save the detached model with no worksets. It is a fact of life that people do use work sharing and worksets to control the visibility of objects, even though there is very little need to do so. But even so, I'm going to detach and preserve the worksets for this file. This would be especially true if you were using Revit Server to collaborate. Notice at the top of the screen that the file has no file name, only the view that we have open. Clicking on the Workset dialog box shows that I am now the owner of all the elements in the file. And this is just not user created elements. This is project standards, all the views and all the families. Now when I go to save the file, it saves it as a brand new file name. I can browse to my project folder and create a new folder for issued files and save the file there, project at dd. So there we have it, the file now has a file name and we can issue it to whoever needs the file by whatever medium that we use for the project. Because of the way that Revit saves central files and indeed local files, the backup folder, which we can see here in Windows Explorer, contains information about the project file and all the incremental saves that have happened during its life. It also contains a file called the slog file which contains information about the users who have been working on the file. This file can be opened with Notepad, and you can find information on all the users who have been accessing the file. Do not be tempted to delete or change these backup files in any way, as you will then be unable to retrieve the history or roll back the project to previous states. So let's go into Revit and take a look at where we can access the history and how we can roll back the project should we need to. I'm doing this process in a blank project. It doesn't matter what project you have open. From the Collaborate tab, I can show history or restore to backup. Let's look at the show history first. The history that I want to look at is the history of my chapter 19 work sharing central file. If I click on open, we're not actually opening the file, we're opening the history. You can see the list of people who have worked on the project. Here we can click on export and save out a delimited text file of the central file's history. The other option I have is to restore a backup. Here I'm going to select the folder, which is the backup folder not the actual project file itself. And this is why you must not change any of the files in the backup folder. So let's click on open. Here are the versions of the file that are available to us. So we can do a save as, and we have two options for this. We can do a save as or a roll back. Let's deal with save as first. This saves the file with a date and timestamp that matches the date and the time that the file was saved. The other option is to roll the project back. You'd have to be extremely careful about using this procedure because this will take the project back to a date and time, not just for yourself, but for every other user on the project. And Revit does give you a warning. This rollback cannot be undone. Are you sure you want to continue? 
All backup versions later than the selected one, including the current version, will be lost. So if you wanted to do this, you're probably better off doing a save as, saving the file with a date and timestamp, and then finding whether that is actually the date and time that you want to roll the file back to. This process does need to be used with extreme caution.